Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Marianne Pinkston, and this is The Better Life with Dr. Pinkston. And as usual, I'm going to bring you a fantastic guest and a lot of great information. We're going to go a little bit different direction. Now, everybody knows that I am really into hormonal health and hormonal therapy. And so, again, we'll take a little bit different direction today and, and talk about hormonal health in regard to the outfall of COVID. And so I have with me this morning Dr. Margaret Christensen, who has a fantastic clinic clinic, huge clinic up in Dallas called Carpathia Collaborative. And you've got to understand where this name came from. But uh, mm-hmm. I have her with me this morning. And so she is on the faculty of IFM, which is the Institute of Functional Medicine. So I am very lucky to have her on board with me today. Welcome in, Dr. Christensen. Thank you. Thank you so much. On. Thanks, Marianne. Yeah. Well, so let's jump right in, I guess, to tell everybody a little bit about you and kind of how you developed sure. where you are. Sure. Yeah, so um, I'm an uh, OBGYN by my original training, and, you know, that was 16 years of training and practice um, in in a big facility. I got very, very sick. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Um, Had to close my practice. Um, I had four babies at the time, you know, so I was, you know, four kids, uh, you know, and delivering everybody else's babies and being up all night, and and that was a piece of the problem. But uh, uh, I had severe chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, you know, uh, all kinds of bowel symptoms, et cetera. And, you know, it took an eight-year journey to figure out that I had severe toxic mold poisoning and, you know, genetics of poor detoxification. Um, and But it's what got me into uh, whole systems functional medicine. And with my background in um, OBGYN and hormones, um, you know, I, that's really kind of where I started. Again, all the bioidentical hormones um, and all that, but under, really understanding the role of environmental toxins. And, and hormone disruptors and endocrine disruptors in what we're seeing. Yeah. And that is a huge piece of what's gone on now in these last four years is <clears throat> yes. um, massive amounts of hormonal disruption, not just hormones, but every single body system because of the spike protein. Yes. Well, and I know you have a large summit coming up, and that is why we have you on, because I definitely want uh, folks to know that you can tune in and listen to. uh, It's called Hormonal Havoc, the COVID Fallout and How to Fix It. And so it's June 17th through the 23rd. So tell us a little bit about what you're hosting and how people. Well, yeah, great. Well, you know, I called it Hormonal Havoc just because I'm an OBGYN and we know that women are the ones who kind of pay attention to these things. Yes. Uh, But I could have I could have called it cardiovascular havoc. I could have called it neuro neurological habit. I could have called it mental health havoc. I could have called it children's health havoc. I could have called it autoimmune havoc yes. because those are all the things that we're seeing this massive fallout now um, from the the last four years of this whole COVID debacle, mm-hmm. uh, which nobody's been allowed to talk about. Exactly. Um, and, you know, the vast amount of censorship of, you know, those of us who understood from the beginning, mm-hmm. um, you know, how to approach this. And it's, it's interesting because I uh, you know, I've, I've told a lot of people, I, I said, well, you know, I've, I've been treating long haul COVID for mm-hmm. 23 years. Yes. Um, that's yes. that's what I've that's what I've been doing. And um, if you understand how biotoxins disrupt um, not just hormonal systems, but also nervous systems and <clears throat> Again, mental health, um, it, you know, it, that's that's real important. But those of us who who kind of understood and who've been working in this field, and as as you know, were uh, were uh, you know very shut down. Our first, you know, what, what can I say? Our First Amendment rights were uh, were, were shut off. But yeah. I think for you know, if we're going to, since hormones is your you know your area and your expertise as, as well, to understand what's happened. Yes, we've had a massive. Uh, drop in 20% drop in live birth rates. Infertility rates are skyrocketing for both men and women. We're finding spike protein in over and testes besides hearts and brains, you know, and so we're understanding that this is, and and these are persistent, (laughs) persistent. And the more exposures to spike proteins that you've had, you know, whether through infection and or vaccination, Vaccines, it's not, it, you know, um, it, it, um, it, that, that, that is part of the problem. So we're seeing um, uh, disruptions from these biotoxins, and I can explain in a second what a biotoxin is, um, that is um, impacting our HPA axis. That's a hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. So that's, um, you know, if anybody who's probably been listening before understands that our brains are, um, is really kind of what controls the, the rest of the body. And so the information that your brain is getting, both from external sources, Sources, from the media that you're watching, from whatever you're listening to, yes. from the air that you're breathing and yeah. the food that you're eating. So those are the external sources, as well as 
the information from your internal sources. Am I inflamed? Am I irritated? Um, am I you know, anxious? All of those are feeding into, into your brain and um, creating the imbalances that, um, and the distress that is then telling your hormones what to do or not to do. And it, they're, they're so confused. Yes. Our bodies are so confused right now. So we're seeing women with incredibly irregular periods, you know, uh, much uh, high rates, again, infertility and PCOS, severe pelvic pain. Absolutely. Um, and then with pregnancies and particularly women who received the, um, the mRNA uh, experimental injection during pregnancy, mm-hmm. um, vast amounts of miscarriages, um, placental abnormalities, fetal abnormalities, fetal deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the gals I have on my summit, she's in our bonus content, is, in this, is, one, is a postpartum nurse whistleblower mm-hmm. who um, you know, came out about how many dead babies that they were delivering. Oh, um, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's something. And people don't know this. And, don't and know. it's continuing to be recommended mm-hmm. by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And that is... Crimes against humanity. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are, you know, when you look at how everything kind of unfolded, and I love what you said before we jumped on air about how, you know, there are many of us who just didn't know. We we responded and did the best we could at the time right. with the information right. that we had. And, you know, I've said kind of all along that it, in the, you know, next 10 years or so, I think every single person is going to have an autoimmune illness, that we will deal with it on a, a, on a 100% basis. It might be 15 years, but I do believe that this is coming and I think that you know part of it is is environmental from so many things that we've been dealing with before COVID into Mm -hmm. add COVID on top of it and like you said biotoxin why so explain what a biotoxin is because it's not just COVID there are many other oh right 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 and And this yeah so um so um uh, biotoxins are tiny fat soluble toxins that get inside our cell membranes. Um, so it's kind of the skin around our cells mm-hmm. and it gets inside the mitochondrial membrane. So if people remember that the mitochondria is your powerhouse of your cells right. and it's what's generating energy. And if we look at cell membranes and mitochondrial membranes, we know there's two layers. There's water soluble layers on the outside and then there's fat soluble layer on the inside. So it's kind of like olive oil in between kind of two, uh, two layers here. Right. And um, so you have fat soluble toxins. They could be mycotoxins from toxic mold. That's right. that's been my area of expertise and specialty. Yes. They could be pesticides and all the plastics and all the petrochemical products that have estrogen like qualities Absolutely. that can get inside those cell membranes. It can be heavy metals. It can be viruses and viral particles, and it can be spike protein. Right. And unfortunately, yeah. And then so what happens is those biotoxins get in that fatty layer of the cell membrane or the mitochondrial membrane. And you go from having olive oil, which allows things in and out of the cell and the receptors are working for the receptors for your estrogen and your progesterone and your thyroid. They're floating around like potatoes in that cell membrane, kind of moving around in that olive oil. Uh, But then what happens, you get those biotoxins stuck in that fat layer and you you turn your olive oil into lard and these little chunks of lard. uh, So we call those lipid rafts. And that impacts your ability both to for your receptors to work correctly for that cell or for the mitochondria to produce energy, um, <clears throat> to respond appropriately to whatever the signals coming to those receptors are. And you, the other piece is you can't get the toxins out of the cell and you can't get the energy out of the mitochondria. Right. So when you are um, you know, being bombarded by uh, biotoxins, which is basically the standard American diet, um, you know, the poor quality water, mm-hmm. um, because we're all, all kinds of stuff in our water, including fluoride, and then um, <clears throat> and then we're breathing in air that's n- and not clean. So all of those things over time impact us, and it's fat soluble. So what happens is it gets in you, and you have a really hard time getting it out of you, yeah. <laughs> um, and because unless you are actively uh, working to move it. And where's our fat? Right. Well, in our boobs, right, and our butts, right, and our hips, all over our bellies, yeah, and our brains. Our brains are all fat. So, so, um, so what you can see is that we are accumulating over time large quantities of disruptive chemicals. Right. That unless we are working on actively getting rid of them, that um, uh, they'll accumulate over, over time and start disrupting again function. Yes. Now you mentioned autoimmunity. Yeah. So we know that um, a huge portion of, of autoimmunity is really triggered by mitochondrial damage. Mm-hmm. So again, these the, 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 the little organelles inside our cells that are producing energy, 
become damaged because of this, you know, all of, all of these things. And I'll come back to spike protein specifically because that's one of the major mechanisms that we're seeing mm-hmm. um, of terrible uh, damage. So, um, <clears throat> Um, so you you damage the mitochondria. They spill out their contents, that, which are very pro-inflammatory, and then it it, it brings all the immune cells um, in, into the area, and then they start producing cytokines and, and autoantibodies. So, um, you know, but so um, you know, and back to ba- back to the compassion piece. Yes, everybody made the best decision that they could, given the information that they had at the time, on on what to do. And we were told by our trusted authorities and our trusted medical professionals and our trusted that, yeah, this was safe and effective. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, I mean, and all the data is now coming out. So all the people who were called conspiracy theorists, you know, four years ago, mm-hmm. you know, it turns out they were, they were right on everything, mm-hmm. um, on masking, on social distancing, on, you know, on shutdowns, on all of that. None of that worked. Right. And, um uh, you know, d- despite what you're hearing coming out of the CDC and the FDA, you know, and the NIH, because you have to understand all of those agencies are completely captured. Mm-hmm. They are completely captured, as are all of our organizational entities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so you so what, what happens is we so we're triggering this damage with, you know, cell membranes with mitochondrial membranes. And we're uh, again, uh, triggering a lot of autoimmunity. The, the, the good thing is that our bodies have amazing healing capacities. If we understand what's happening, yes. And the mechanisms behind it, our bodies know how to heal. We have an intuitive healer within us, right. and uh, so that is part of our job: yes. is to is to help to figure out, okay, what's going on here, and how do we address it. And most people, you know, that I see in my clinic come to me for a reason because of my more integrative style and in, in training. Right. And most people are like, you know, I know my body can heal. I know if I give it the right thing, not a pharmaceutical. I right. know if I give it the right thing that my body can heal. I have a lot of people who think it's too late. They feel like either these last uh, few years or that they've been mm-hmm. exposed to mold for 20 years, maybe yeah. that they feel like it's too late. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, again, this is there's always hope for health and healing. Always. That's kind of one of my mottos. Yes. Um, and um, even very small um, changes can make huge differences. Okay. So when we start, um, you know, really uh, it, it cleaning up the quality of our food, mm-hmm. uh, that's probably the number one thing. And it's challenging because, you know, it's it's everything so much more expensive these days. But for God's sake, support your local farmers. Uh, right. Get involved in a, a community-supported um, agriculture, a CSA, yeah. you know, where you can buy, you know, local produce or um, at, you know, one of the local farmers markets, you know, in, in town, uh, grow your own garden, have a community garden, because we all need to have a little food sovereignty. Absolutely. Um, our, our food supply has been so corrupted and taken over by you know, these big forces. Uh, so, so we can clean up our food, uh, again, clean up our air, making sure that we all have, um, you know, high quality HEPA air filtration uh, in our homes, particularly when we're sleeping. And um, yeah, and then if you've had any kind of water damage, uh, you know, either at work or at home, those are things that need to be dealt with because toxic mold exposure over a period of time, it's very hormonally disrupting. It really and I'll get is. To, yeah, I'll, I'll get to bi- back to biotoxins and how they disrupt uh, hormones in a second, but yeah, and you know, so clean air, clean water, uh, clean food. Right. You know, again, having having filtered water. Right. So we talked about clean food. You know, filtering uh, some water and having some um, uh, air filters, right. help the air filters in your house, and getting rid of. You know, if 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 you got it, if you got a mold issue, that that's a whole. I, I have a whole summit on that. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> um, and um, and that's what took me out. That's yes. what took me out. I got taken out with toxic mold exposure, um, you know, as did my children. And unfortunately, two of the four are still significantly suffering and been diagnosed somewhere on the spectrum disorder. Um, and one very, very, very severely so. Oh, um, so yeah. And that's uh, yeah. And that yeah. Yeah. So the, this the, is a, this is a personal journey for me, understanding biotoxins, understanding hormones as an OBGYN, absolutely. you know, understanding children's developmental needs, understanding neuroinflammatory conditions. And what I'm seeing in my office now is just is 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 um, you know very challenging. So coming back to compassion, yes, yes, and acceptance, yes. You know what? We did the best that we could. If you got the vaccine because you believed you were you were doing absolutely the right thing, you were protecting your family, you were protecting your your grandparents, yes. um, whatever. Th- then um, you know, and or you're a clinician who um, you know you were you were directed by our top 
authorities and they knew and that's the story that's coming out right, they is. knew they knew right when this thing came out right that it was that it had all kinds of problems and at least 15 percent of people are ongoing suffering so yeah so again that compassion acceptance okay this is where we are okay now we got to work together right. both sides have to go work together and i think that the that that the people who are going to move this forward are the clinicians right. who have been injured right uh with spike protein uh, uh, over time absolutely so. and have a story because anybody yeah. in the integrative world has a story yeah. behind them about why they practice the way they practice Yes, yeah. you do. I yeah. do. We all do. And so have about uh, two and a half minutes here. So can we talk a little bit about spike protein and how, how it yeah. functions, where it came from, how it functions? That's a huge topic in two minutes. but OK, well, that's a yeah. You know, um, um, again, this was developed in a lab, you know, in conjunction with the, the United States um, D- Department of Defense um, uh, labs on gain of function. And that got moved from North Carolina over to Wuhan. And um, it, it has all kinds of unusual sequences in it that we know that are not found in nature, um, including one that's called a furin cleavage site. And that is one of the things that makes it the spike, the, a portion of the spike protein is called the S1 portion, so particularly toxic because it, that furin cleavage site allows that spike protein to break off again, get in those cell membranes, act as a biotoxin, get into that mitochondria start replicating itself. It it, it hijacks the cell and starts replicating itself. Um, And theoretically, then your body comes in to produce antibodies uh, against it. But it doesn't stay in the, it doesn't stay in the site where it was injected. That mRNA lipid nanoparticles that were put around it, highly toxic polyethylene glycol uh, for some people, just super inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it fat soluble. So that's what's allowed it to travel around the body, which they said it wouldn't do, but it does. And it's and and so where does it go? It's gone to the brain. So we've seen the one of the massive amounts of side effects we see is kind of brain fog um, and you know can, you know um, you know, can't think issues, migraines, headaches. Mm-hmm. But also we're seeing very significant neuro, neurodegenerative diseases that are very rapid onset. Yes. We're also seeing a lot of peripheral neuropathy. So again, a lot of uh, painful nerve ending yes. I- issues. Yes. So. Again, so it's found in the brain, it's found in the heart tissue, and I think, you know, many, probably most people have heard at this point the levels of myocarditis, pericarditis, so that's inflammation in the muscle of the heart itself, yes. um, and, and the sac around the, the, the heart, um, so we're seeing, you know, strokes, arrhythmias, a, a, atrial fibrillation, okay, massive right. amounts, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> And massive amounts of blood clotting as well. And then, again, as I mentioned earlier, that spike protein is being found in the ovaries and in the testes. Yes. Um, Again, very high levels of mitochondria. So wherever there's high levels of mitochondria, think about this. Our heart's on all the time, 24-7, right? Right. Our brain, you know, our neurons are always firing 24-7. Yes. And then our ovaries and testes are... um, have high levels of energy production because they're making eggs and sperm. Yes. And so they've been, um, you know, markedly impacted by this inflammatory component. And then, like I said, there are, uh, there are sequences within the spike protein itself Mm -hmm. that are not new to nature. I mean, excuse me, that are new to nature, uh, that this wasn't, this was, this didn't arise arise out of a wet market. And that is just, um, uh, yes. Smoke and mirrors, a lot of, a lot of smoke and mirrors. Absolutely. So we hit that zero mark and we're going to, PD Labs, is sponsoring us today, which everybody knows who PD Labs is. So PDLabsRx.com, uh, Ray Solano owns the pharmacy and is definitely uh, uh, behind uh, all of this today, sponsoring you and I to get this done. And so we are going to take a very short break, hold that thought, come back on the other side, and we will talk more about it. Hi, this is Ray Solano with your Healthy Choices Minute, sponsored by Prescription Dispensing Labs. New research has concluded that implementing dietary changes could prevent gut inflammatory processes involved in some chronic diseases. Modulation of your gut microbes through diets enriched with vegetables, legumes, grains, nuts, and a higher intake of plants over animal foods has a potential to prevent intestinal inflammatory conditions at the core of many chronic diseases. In short, the foods we eat in our dietary patterns have a major influence on our immune system that can cause many conditions we are suffering from today. Solution, try our OptiMeal Shake. Our team has developed the best tasting, healthiest shake you've ever experienced to control blood sugar and to improve your gut. 
gut. Start your day today with a healthy choice. Call us today at 888-909-0110 for a free sample of the OptiMeal Shake. 888-909-0110. Remember, you have a choice in healthcare. Welcome back, everybody. We've had a very interesting uh, first uh, 20 minutes or so with Dr. Margaret Christensen here and uh, talking a little bit about biotoxins and spike protein. And so she has a fantastic summit coming up. And the reason why we have her on is to advertise our summit coming up uh, 17th through the 23rd, I believe. And it's called Mm -hmm. The Hormonal Havoc, The COVID Fallout and How to Fix It. Something you can join. I will have that on my site uh, where you can join in on the summits for practitioners as well as the general public. So please join mm-hmm. in. And thank you. You've, you've given us a lot of great information. We were talking a bit about autoimmunity and hormone disruption. And, and so I know you've been affected by autoimmunity, as have I. And a mm-hmm. uh, big increase coming up in, in society, I think, for, for devastation here. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, 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 what I did want to say, again, with, with that summit, because we're going to be talking about all these things that I just brought up, Absolutely. brain health, cardiovascular health, hormonal health, children's health, fertility, um, <clears throat> but autoimmunity. So we have seen an 800 percent increase in new onset autoimmunity cases uh, since the whole rollout of, um, of COVID and the, you know, and the spike protein itself um, for the mRNA injections. And, um, you know, unfortunately, because, again, it's triggering this damage to the cell membranes and to the mitochondrial membrane, mm-hmm. and it's turning on our immune systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, the, and I think everybody in the country now knows what a cytokine is. They've heard that term. I think so. <laughs> These inflammatory chemicals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so um, I, I think it's just, it, it's real important kind of to, to uh, understand and look in that. The other thing I think is real important to understand is the role of trauma in autoimmunity. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, whether you've had what we, you know, a, a, you know, one kind of, you know, major significant trauma, uh, you know, se- severe car wreck or, you know, um, uh, witnessing, some, you know, something very violent or, again, being a soldier, um, <clears throat> Or just kind of the chronic complex trauma that a lot of us are dealing with, these chronic complex stressors uh, uh, over time. And what happens is uh, we, when we are distressed, again, we are turning our fight or flight response on just full blast. If anybody understands that when you do that, you're putting a lot out a lot of adrenaline mm-hmm. and then also cortisol. Those are our adrenal hormones. Yes. And those are, impact every single hormone other hormone, your insulin, your thyroid, your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone are all, all impacted um, when you hit your adrenal glands. And then you've, um, you've you know, created uh, damage to cells, and then the body starts making antibodies against our own cells. That's what autoimmunity is. Yes. Um, and, and then we, we, we have this total inflammatory uh, uh, thing that happens in our body, depending on where your particular vulnerabilities are in your particular genetics depends on where that shows up. So rheumatoid arthritis is going to show up in the joints. Psoriasis shows up in the skin. You know, ulcerative colitis shows up in the gut. Um, MS shows up in your nervous system. And um, in my case, fibromyalgia, you know, chronic fatigue, that is, again, a mitochondrial dysfunction and and autoimmunity against the the mitochondria. And Hashimoto's, I've had, you know, uh, Hashimoto's is a common one that... so. So, so what we're seeing is this massive increase in, um, in in autoimmunity, and again, there's underlying factors which has to do with the standard American diet and severe nutrient deficiencies, along with lots of chemicals. Right. And, um, and <laughs> I know the emoji. Thank you, iPhone. Like the emoji thing. Thank <laughs> goodness. Sorry, uh, it does. You know, so so um, again, so b- because um, the United States had the highest death rate. Of, of any other country, uh, all the developed countries of deaths from COVID. And part of it had to do with the fact that we were so inflamed to begin with and a lot of autoimmunity already triggered to begin with yeah. and, and exposures. Massive nutrient deficiencies, our, our food supply is so corrupt at, at this point and so many chemicals, and, but all that can be fixed and that's all really good, yeah. So, so if you, again, you have poor food quality, poor air quality, and then you are being locked, you know, in a in a in a room or a house or uh, whatever, you know, for weeks on end, months on end, years on end, um, with nothing but fear being fed to you through the television screen. Um, fear, 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 wave upon wave upon wave upon wave. Well, that keeps your brain in in sympathetic overdrive. You're pouring out your adrenaline. You're pouring out your cortisol all the time. Um, impacting your HPA axis, that is then impacting your 
estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, whether or not you're ovulating correctly, whether or not you're having periods correctly, whether or not you have a little beto or not, yeah. whether or not you can, you know, if you're a guy, you can get it up or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so so that is is how we're seeing that. And then hormones, uh, and you know this, and hormones and estrogen particularly uh, is directly connected to our autoimmune system. Yep. So you can see you have this fear response, hormonal response, autoimmune response, and it just keeps it going in a loop. Yep. Yep. The good news is we talk all about the solutions. Yes, we do. <laughs> we talk all about the solutions uh, in this. And um, <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, so... Um, uh, yeah, so we are, we are solution driven. We are, yeah, yeah. So we're solution driven. Some very simple things, absolutely. very simple. So we start with simple things, just, you know, plain old, again, diet, um, basic nutrients that you can use, vitamin D, vitamin A, quercetin, mm-hmm. you know, very simple things. Groups get together in community, um, health coaching, super important. Turn and then the we can also look at, um, uh, you know, more advanced therapies and yes. things like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and why they work, mm-hmm. you know. And, of course, hydroxychloroquine, for anybody who's got rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. they take it. This is Plaquenil. Yeah. And what what is it? It's an antimicrobial. It's actually, yeah, it's an antimalarial. Right. And, um, yeah, so, you know, how is it How is it that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were working? Mm-hmm. They're not antiviral so much. What they do is they stop this super pro-inflammatory response. Yeah. The T cell response in absolutely. our bodies, the autoimmunity. So, Which is so we're, great we're, we're just, and, and very yes. helpful, right? So, yeah. absolutely. Well, you know what? This has absolutely been eye opening. Uh, I think for many, for many, not for many, just yeah. you know, reaffirms what uh, what they have believed over time. And I think turning off the TV is one of the biggest things that you can do and get away from the fear mongering and whatnot. I believe that and preach that for a very long time. But uh, but you have been very uh, uh, affirming on all of this, and thank you so much. So. I definitely want people to know where they can go to reach you and go to the summit. So I will have that on my website. And of course, uh, being sponsored by PD Labs, which is the uh, compounding pharmacy, which I work with up in Cedar Park. I'm medical director of uh, the Laval Health Center, Performance Health Center. And so please go to drpbetterlife.com. That is my website where you can find uh, the link to the summit. And we definitely want everybody to join in, whether you're a practitioner and involved in, you know, a nurse practitioner or dentist or whoever you are involved in medical care, but also for the general public. So uh, pdlabsrx.com is another place where you could go to find out more information as well. Dr. Christensen, you're a blessing. I, and I love Ray Thank and you. I love PD Labs yes. and we use a lot of their products yes. and low-dose naltrexone yes. and peptides, again, glutathione. These are all part of the solution Absolutely. that, uh, of you know, how to take us there. Yeah. Yes, and thinking are. in whole systems. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, again, thank you very much. Everybody have a blessing. Thanks so much.